Good afternoon. I have quite a few things at the top, but then we will take plenty of questions. Uh, I wanted to take a moment at the top of our briefing today to note that on this day 21 years ago, President Clinton announced the naming of the White House briefing room for former Press Secretary James Brady. Brady, as many of you are probably aware, was severely wounded in a 1981 assassination attempt on President Reagan and later became a prominent gun violence prevention advocate. During the campaign, President Biden laid out an ambitious plan to make our community safer. And, and that's why, in part, yesterday, senior members of his team, domestic policy advisor Susan Rice, White House Public Engagement Director Cedric Richmond, hosted a virtual discussion with leaders of gun violence prevention groups to discuss our shared goals. The very gun violence prevention organization named for James Brady was part of that discussion, along with Giffords, Everytown for Gun Safety, and Moms Demand Action. These organizations all have a critical role to play. Gun violence may not be in the headlines today or right now, but gun violence continues to fracture American communities and American families every single day. Last year, we saw a historic spike in homicides across America, and we know gun violence in our cities disproportionately affects black and brown individuals. Last month, we also saw a near, a near record increase in the number of gun sales. We look forward to working with gun violence survivors and advocates and sharing more in the weeks and months ahead about our efforts to make our communities safer. Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Um, does the White House believe it can take executive action to address gun control, or is it going to take a legislative approach? And if it can, if you do believe it can take, you can take executive action, why haven't you done so yet? Well, uh, first I will say that, you know, the president addressing gun violence in the country and putting in place additional safety measures is something that the president has a personal commitment to, uh, and his history on this issue is evidence of that. Uh, you know, he's obviously taken on the NRA twice uh, and won, uh, and he is happy and eager to do that in the future. Uh, part of our engagement is working with uh, groups to determine what the uh, steps are that can be taken, but I don't have anything to preview for you at this point in terms of what the policy will look like or what form it will take. One other one. Um, how much does the president want to spend on an infrastructure package? How much? How much? Uh, wait, wait until we're, it's, a, it's a process of ongoing discussion. Obviously, part of our Build Back Better agenda that he talked about on the campaign trail is an investment in infrastructure. The there, there's that Build Back Better uh, uh, phrase once again. Meeting this morning was a reflection of how important it is to him to meet with bipartisan leaders and have have a discussion about what's required in states and communities. Uh, but I don't have a, a number for you. We're we're not at that stage in the process quite yet. Just one other one on uh, New York City. Shalom Yasharala, Shalom. All power and glory to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai by Shem, Rakah Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and teach one of rule well. Peace and salutation to the Akim, the fellow laborers, the hopeful elect, pushing this truth at risk of their own lives throughout the four corners of the earth. And to the Aquas listening, listening and learning, Shalom. It's your brother Shema from the Pillars of Benjamin Camp here in Toronto with another lesson. And through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahushai, I tie this lesson. Biden, you know, Sleepy Joe is coming for your guns, man. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, and uh, you know, Jacob's trouble. Jacob's troubles is on our doorsteps, man. But I, I wanted to grab a scripture, <clears throat> Salakia, before I got into the um, this next little article. I wanted to read Second Ezra eight, verse fifty, and it reads: "For many great miseries shall be done to them." Right, many great miseries. Many great miseries, man. You look at that word misery. Misery is not a misery is not a pleasant thing, right? Looking at that word misery, it's not pleasant. So many great miseries will be done to them. Misery, grievous affliction, painful, a state of grievous affliction, condition of external unhappiness, right? Right, done to them. Who? Them. That in the latter times shall dwell in the world. So those in the latter times, which is now. We're in the latter times, man. We dwell in this world. Right? But then many great miseries are going to fall upon the heathen. Fall upon two-thirds of our people. Fall upon the wicked. The elect will be exempt. Right? We're going to prove that in Jeremiah 30 verse 7. Right? 
because they have walked in great pride and, and no one has walked in more pride and been more prideful than America the Great, Babylon the Great. So many great ministries come into America the Great, Babylon the Great, man, ultimately leading, ultimately leading to the ICBMs, right? That destroying wind, right? But this, this is a tried, tested, and true playbook of a uh, wicked Isa. Right, I wanted to go. I wanted to go into this article, right here at the end of the article. And uh, it's an article that came out back in 2013, a while back, under the Investors Business Daily. And the title was "Warning from Russia: Americans Never Give Up Guns." So th this is the Russians <laughs> telling the American populace, "Don't give up your, don't give up your, 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 your guns. Don't give up your burners, right? Don't give up your, 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 your arms." And uh, what I got from this was uh, here in the sec second, the third, last paragraph. Writing in the newspaper, Pravda, right, which is a Russian publication, where he is a regular contributor, Stanislav Mission notes that one of the first things the early communist rulers did was to disarm the population, right? This is the, this is the playbook, man. Disarm the population. From that point, he says, mass repression, mass arrests, Mass deportations, mass murder, mass starvation were all a safe game for the powers that were, right? So the government, the ruling class elites, Isa, Edom, Idumia, Soka White Man, Babylon the Great, right? Once he, once he, once he puts, put, uh, uh, activates this playbook of taking away the arms, he's able to mass repress, mass arrest, mass deport, mass murder, mass starvation. Let's get a, let's get a precept. Second Ezra 15. Second Ezra 15 verse 49. I will send plagues upon thee. Who's going to send plagues? The Mosai, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh, Shai. Upon thee? Upon who? America the Great. Babylon the Great. What are these plagues entail? What are these plagues going to be? I will send plagues upon thee, widowhood, right? Widowhood. Women losing losing their, their husbands, man. Poverty, right? No money. Destitute. Famine, right? Starving. Sword, right? Weapons, w w a killing instrument. Death by a killing instrument. The modern, today it's a gun. And pestilence, right? That's disease. To waste thy houses, right? Waste whose houses? America the Great, Babylon the Great. With destruction and death, right? That's what's coming, man. The Most High Yahweh Shem Yom Shai is going to put the spirit on E, Esau, Edom, who is the wicked, to roll. King David had a prayer. Psalm 17, verse, verse 13, and it reads, and this is a prayer of King David. Arise, O Lord, all caps, Yahweh. Disappoint him, cast him down. Disappoint who? The wicked. Isai Edom, Babylon the Great, in today's times. The wicked, they are the wicked. Malachi 1 and 4, Job 9 and 24 says the earth is given over the hand of the wicked. They are the wicked. Disappoint him, cast him down, deliver my soul from the wicked. Deliver my soul. This is a prayer of King David. And that's all. We're, that's the only thing that's going to protect his elect in these times that are coming. Jacob's trouble. His prayer and the hedge of protection. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the Most High is about to use, about to put the spirit on these wicked Edomites to roll with great wrath. Revelation 12, verse 12. Right? Back to this article. One of the, one of the first things the early communist rulers did was to disarm the population. From that point, he says, mass repression, mass arrests, mass deportations, mass murder, mass starvation were all a safe game for the powers that were. The worst they had to fear was a pitchfork in the guts or a knife in the back of, of or the occasional hunting rifle. Even with the demise of the Soviet Union, Stalin-era gun restrictions continue with the mission giving the reason. For those of us fighting for our traditional rights, the U.S. Second Amendment is a rare light in an ever-darkening room. Governments will use the excuse of trying to protect the people, right? And this is what they, the order out of chaos, man. Create, 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 the, create the problem, provide the solution, right? Governments will use the excuse of trying to protect the people from maniacs and crime 
But in reality, it is the bureaucrats, right? These ruling class elites protecting their power and position. It's a playbook, man. The experience of Nazi Germany and the Soviet Union shows how gun control is a necessary precursor, right? To happen before to tyranny and mass murder, right? This is a playbook, right? Esau Eden is about to roll, man, right? And come with tyranny and mass murder. Imagine if, the, if every agent of the Gestapo or the Soviet secret police had made that midnight knock on the door only to be greeted with someone holding a firearm. From King George to Joseph Stalin, history shows, right? It's a playbook, man, why we have a Second Amendment. You see me? And, and these devils, they're not playing, man. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. It's all gradualism. Take away a little bit more. Take away a little bit more. Restrict a little bit more. Oppress a little bit more. Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, right? That day is great. No other time like it. So that none is like it, right? No, no, no time. No time has been documented, documented in history or recorded. That is going to be worse. That that was worse than the times that are about to that are about to come. Jacob's trouble. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he, he, who's the he? The Israelites, beginning with the elect. The so-called indigenous, the so-called Latino, the so-called Negro. Israelite being a people. Beginning with the elect. The elect are going to be saved out of it. But he shall be saved out of it. The elect, man. Right? So when everyone else is bugging out, because guns have been stripped, can't protect themselves, everyone's bugging out, the elect will be hidden, man. Right? There's going to say in Psalms 27, verse 5. Right? The power of prayer, man. The Mosai. The Mosai is going to cover his elect. Repent, you two-thirds out there, man. Got a time of trouble that's coming. No time like it. Psalms 27, verse 5. And it reads, For in the time of trouble, right? Jacob's trouble. That time of trouble that's coming. No time like it. He shall hide him in his pavilion. Who shall be hidden? His elect. Whose pavilion? The Most High Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Let's look up, let's look up this uh, pavilion. He shall hide him in his pavilion. Right? His elect shall be hidden. Strong's H 5520. Soch. Soch. In the Hebrew. Thicket, lair, co co covert, booth. Right? The water Yahweh Shem Shai. Right? So his elect don't have to worry, man. While everything's bugging out and destabilizing going on around us. The elect don't have to worry, man. Right? For in the time of trouble, he should hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle. His house. In the secret of his tabernacle. Shall he hide me? Right? And how do we get hidden? Through this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Through these scriptures, man. Right? That's how we're preserved. He shall set me upon a rock, right? That's how we're preserved. So while, while all hell's breaking loose, and it's coming, all hell is about to break loose. Right? Second Timothy 3 verse 1. This know also, right? Know this, man. Understand this. Know this. That in the last days, right, which is now, perilous times shall come. Perilous, man. Dangerous, perilous times shall come. Right? All hell's about to break loose, man. Repent. Right? But we're armed with this knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. And we know through the Most High, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, we should be hidden. Right? Right? No guns, no arms, no machines is going gonna, is gonna to save us. It's the Most High alone going to save us. And the Most High is about to put this spirit on wicked Esau to roll, man. Right? To come down having great wrath. Lamentations 3, verse... And it's the Most High's mercies. We pray daily for the, for the mercy of the Most High, Yahweh, Shem, Yahweh, We'll close out with this. Lamentations 3, verse 22. And it reads, Is the Lord's, all caps, Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, mercies that we are not consumed, right? Throwing up our prayers, keeping the law, statute, and commandments, trying to be as unblemished as possible, observing the commandments, fleeing from sin, right? By the Lord's mercies, we are not that we are not consumed. So when all hell is break, all hell is breaking loose. His elect are not going to be consumed because they're going to fall under. They're going to have that mercy because his compassions fail not. The Most High loves his elect, man. 
right? Repent, you two-thirds out there, man. Things are bad, perilous times. Bad times are coming, man. Bad times, right? I pray edified. I don't want to say, stay prayed. I pray without ceasing. Kwame Asherala, wa abad babal.